Welcome to the Biomaterials Lab. Safety is our first priority, so always ensure to wear personal protective equipment on you, which includes the lab coat, safety glasses and gloves. For further safety information, please visit safety.rise.edu. To power on the printer, toggle the power switch on back of the printer. The BioX offers enclosed area for sterile 3D printing. This is the touch interface to communicate with the printer. This is the door to provide sterile enclosed area. Here goes our print heads. We have multiple print heads such as the pneumatic print head, electromagnetic dispenser, syringe print head, temperature control print head, UV print head, and thermoplastic print head. We can accommodate three different print heads at the same time. The internal air compressor can provide pressure up to 200 kilopascals. This is the print surface. It can be heated or cooled. It can be heated up to 65 degrees Celsius or cooled down to 4 degrees Celsius. To clean the chamber before bioprinting, click on settings and click on clean chamber. The door needs to be fully closed and secured to run the clean chamber protocol. We can enable clean chamber fan and click start. The UV light is turned on for surface disinfection. After completing the process, the UV lights are turned off. Today, we will be printing with pneumatic print head. This can be heated from 30 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius. We will be using selling start material for 3D printing. The pneumatic print head accepts 3 ml selling provided syringes. We will be using a female to female lure lock adapter to transfer the contents of the syringe into a selling syringe. On the lure lock end, we will be inserting the needle of our desired gauge. Today, we will be using a 23 gauge tapered needle. And on the other end, we will be inserting the air compressor line adapter. Transfer this assembly into the print head. Tighten the screw to secure the syringe in position. Move this assembly onto the print head position number one. As we can see, there is no light glowing now, which indicates that the print head has not been seated properly. Gently press down to see the light. Once it turns blue, the print head is in correct place. Insert the air compressor line into the back of the printer until it stops and gently pull on it to ensure proper connection. Be cautious to prevent any kinks in the tubing. On the welcome screen, we have three options of 3D printing. To bioprint, to doppler print, or to select a protocol. If we have already created a protocol, we can start printing right away. Today, we will be using the bioprint option. From the list here, choose the .stl file. We can browse to the folders that are on the flash drive. The BioX accepts both .stl files and G-code files. Today, we will be using one of the BioX 3D models. We can click on preview to have a look at the file to make sure it is the right one. Next is the surface. We can choose to print on petri dish, a 6 well plate or a glass slide. Today we will be printing on a 6 well plate. Using 6 well plate we can define the object to be printed once and the printer will replicate 6 times in each well. We can choose 
appropriate vendor to accommodate for slight changes in the weld dimensions and spacing. Next is the printer. Here we have the option to clean the chamber for sterile 3D printing or if we are using an external pump to provide air pressure, option to heat or cool the print bed and also for photo cross-linking. If you want to enable, you can choose the frequency and the position where the cross-linking happens. Today, we will not be needing any photo cross-linking. We have a UV photo cross-linking print head for 405 nanometers if needed. Next, we click on tool one. Click on tool type and automatically the type of print head will be highlighted. Here, it is a pneumatic three milliliter print head. Next, we have the bio ink profile, which is selling start material, or we can choose from one of these materials or create a new profile so that we don't have to enter these printing parameters every time. Again, we have options for photo cross-linking to be enabled or disabled. Next is the nozzle diameter. Today we will be using a 23 gauge nozzle and click OK to accept the changes. Next is the pressure. If you are working with new material, we are not sure about the pressure needed for proper extrusion. In this case, click on the settings and go to tools. Select tool 1 where we have mounted the tool head. Click on pressure to optimize extrusion pressure. Here, we can choose different step sizes. Place a piece of Kim wipe to collect extruded material. Adjust the pressure and click test flow. We may have to try different pressures until we see uniform fiber being extruded. As 50 kPa is not extruding a uniform fiber, I'm going to increase the pressure to 100 kPa. Once we see optimal extrusion, click OK. Now click on the home button to get back to printer option. Here we go to pressure and change the pressure to 100 kPa and hit OK. And the printing speed, we can change it as needed. I'm going to reduce the speed to 10 millimeter per second and click OK. Remember, the extrusion pressure and printing speed are dependent on each other and in turn dependent on the needle diameter and ink material. So these value may or may not work with another ink material. Pre and post flow can be used for material that needs a moment to begin extruding or may still be attached to the nozzle after extruding. Next, click on the plus sign beside the bio ink profile to save the profile. The current profile will remember the nozzle diameter, the extrusion pressure, the print speed, pre and post flow information regarding the bio ink. After optimizing the printing parameters, we go to the next tab, layers. Here we can choose from different infill pattern. Here I'll be choosing the grid lattice. We have options for perimeter and tool for infill. I'll be choosing rectilinear path and click OK. The infill density can be modified as needed. Next, click on preview to look at the layers. Next is the print menu. We can save the print file and rename it so that we can find it later. This will save all the printing parameters including the 3D model, print surface, nozzle diameter, extrusion pressure, print speed, infill pattern, etc. Here is a summary of the printing parameters and we can click print to start printing. Before we can start printing, we have an error message that the printer must be calibrated. To calibrate, click on calibrate and click on manual calibration. A figure is displayed how the calibration is to be done. We need to place the tip of the needle in the first well, which is the bottom left well of the multi-well plate. Place our six well plate on the print bed. We can use the, these metal flaps to hold the six well plate in place. Click start to manually calibrate the printer. A homing cycle is performed to measure the axes. Using these controls for manual calibration, we move the tip of the needle into the first well. Remember, the print head moves along X and Y axis and the print bed moves along Z axis. When we click up, the print bed moves up. So make sure we have our step size appropriate.
Once we find the calibration appropriate, click on Calibrate and click Start. Here, I have canceled the print after it completed printing in the first two wells. After completing the print job, we can take out the print surface. To remove the mounted print head, first disconnect the air compressor line by pushing this gray flap and gently pulling the line. Next, gently pull the print head upwards by pressing on back and holding the print head in the front. Unscrew the screw in the front to remove the cartridge. We can power off by pressing the power button and tapping on power off. For further information or questions, please contact the Biomaterials Lab Manager.